Hey my beautiful angel, it's Josie Grouse and welcome to Soul Awakening channel. In this video, you are going to learn how to invoke angels for help, how to ask angels for assistance. So many questions I get, Josie, you know, I'm asking, I'm saying prayers, I'm calling upon a specific angel, but, but nothing happens. So in this video, you are going to understand why. You are going to learn three important laws by which angels operate. Everything in our universe is subject to law. Angels cannot override, they cannot break these laws period. So you are here because you want to be more in communication with angels. You want to feel them. You want to experience their energy every single day. The first law that you need to understand about angels is that they are beings of light. They serve the system of what we call light. There are systems. There's a system of darkness. There is a system of light. So angels specifically, that's their job. They serve this system called light. There are other beings, and you may have your own name for them. They serve, let's say, the system of darkness, and they do their job well. But angels serve the system of light. Another important point about the system of light is it serves the common good. The system of darkness, just as a contrast, serves something what we call evil or anti-actions to well-being, anything that takes you away from well-being, anything that puts you in a position where you have to override the laws of good, that is also the system of what we call evil, what we call uh, darkness. So angels, they only serve this purpose. They work for the good of all. Good of all. The system of good implies that this good exists for everybody. If what you truly want benefits the world, Give this clear message to your angels saying, okay, I'm here. And let's say you have a job interview today. Let them know how you getting this job is going to benefit whoever is going to make this world a better place. I promise you, when you put this emphasis, good for all, good for everybody. Not just your own good, but good for everybody. Angels will respond. Another important point that you need to understand about angels. They work for collective consciousness. They work for a community, let's say a particular religion. They may work on the level of, let's say, earth. They work in many different groups. Angels do not work individually with people. It looks to you as if they are responding to you. But when you're calling upon Archangel Michael, think about how many people are asking Archangel Michael for help. So which means that you are entering the system called Archangel Michael. And at this time, how many people are connected through this web called Archangel Michael, receiving the benefits of that system, receiving energy of Archangel Michael, okay? It feels to us like they're personal. It's designed that way. And I really want you to think of them as personal. Think of them as, as if they are connecting with you. Think that Archangel Michael is there, just like he's here with me now, he's there with you now all at the same time. They work for collective consciousness. Angels are not personal. It feels to you like they're personal and they're doing their job well to help you and to elevate you. 
but you have to understand at the same time you're part of the greater reality now let's talk about the system of evil on the other hand evil what we call evil is personal so this is the major difference when you you've had situations when angels don't just start talking to you this happens but it doesn't usually you don't usually register it but sometimes you hear like negative conversations and negative thoughts and some kind of like conversations as if you know some a satan or some kind of uh trickster is trying to play with you with your mind has this happened to you and how many times have you felt angels just tell, telling you you've got you've got this you've got you know you're doing the great job out of the blue just inspiring that doesn't usually happen but we often find ourselves being communicating with someone who whose energy we pick up and we realize someone is here and someone's energy may not be kind of the the pleasant positive energy so when you understand that angels work for the benefit of good so but however human beings are weird human beings are uh, i just want to say all the nice words about human beings because i'm one of them and you are one of them and there's so many great things about human beings but they're also human and as a human being we have the qualities of betrayal envy you know anger we experience many many different negative emotions and they're much stronger if at some point in your life you felt jealousy towards someone let's say for example someone interfered in your relationship and maybe you lost a partner because your partner left for someone else that someone else how what is that energy exchange is going to happen would you love them very likely you will have resentful feelings you will have so much jealousy envy disappointment these sorts of emotions where do you go and some of these interactions will call for that dark force will call upon the dark force i want something bad to happen to that woman or to that man i want whoever is in charge of all evil has to help me and you will direct some energy towards that individual who's going to help you this being angels you know because jealousy where does it go who is jealousy going to trigger many negative emotions and thoughts and invocations from the darker forces are just caused by pure jealousy we feel jealous we feel abandoned we want other people to feel bad we are human we want other people to suffer because we suffered we want revenge we want to have the, the kind of see the glory over days where when all of our enemies are you know laying low low or they're suffering they're in pain or something else is happening has this happened to you so in these moments calling upon consciously calling upon i really desire something bad to happen to somebody it may not even be happening consciously just feeling you're feeling like this wishing someone else a negative intention is going to call upon the dark force that's what they do these dark forces work individually all right blessings helping hands that's just kind of like the work of the light but in our world we're not calling angels regularly because we're triggered a lot of the times by a negative emotions so by wishing someone wishing someone something bad to happen to the person who've hurt you is going to call upon the dark energy so that dark energy is kind of like did you call for you know did you ask 
me to help you <laughs> with your envy by causing harm to someone? You've got this. You've got this. And then what happens is that this is a verbal contract between people, let's say, in the dark power. In this case, when you are asking, when you're sending negative intention to the person you don't like, angels will step away. They will not interfere. This is the law. This is important to understand about angels. They will not interfere. You're not asking the system of light in this case. Dear angels, help me to learn this lesson and help me to accept myself unconditionally and to send love and to only focus on love. This will be a request to the system of light. But we don't do that, right? We often call upon the dark force to do that. So when intentionally this dark energy is triggered, angels cannot interfere. It's the law of free will. Everything you ask in your free spirit, in your free mind, with your own choice, will give either the light force uh, you know, a channel to work with you or the dark force. I hope you understand. This is really important. Angels will not interfere. Then what happens is when we do a lot of the interactions, negative interactions with the system of darkness, we feel shame of communicating with angels. This is a paradox that always makes me wonder. Angels are not going to help me. Well, you know, they are not going to help me because maybe my actions, they will look at my bad actions, things that I've done, and they will not like me. They will punish me for something, and I, I don't want to be punished. And rarely asking angels for anything, for help, for assistance, for guidance, for anything. God knows what you are going to experience moments when you feel like the light, the forces of light may not want to collaborate or work with you. This is, you know, it's just for you to be aware of your own thoughts and feelings. Another thing that you need to understand about angels, this is a law, is that angels always will create balance balance between the dark force and the light force. We've seen, you know, when there is a huge turmoil on planet Earth, and it's followed by years, decades of peace. So war and peace, so of light and darkness, they're all moving together. It's always like balancing force. Angels will step forward to bring harmony into your life. Sometimes when you're going through chaos and a lot of negative emotions, a lot of negative feelings, angels cannot interfere. Again, because that somehow is not in harmony with, with you, with your life's purpose, with your life's events. Somewhere along the road, you will go through the period of great peace, great love but before that you have to go through that period of turmoil you may not see down the road when you're going through this it feels to you like my god this is hell what's going on but angels will not interfere because if they come along and they balance all of your bad negative experiences guess where you will begin to lose that time or that energy in the future where things will be becoming, you know, more balanced. So this is about your own personal relationship with angels, knowing how to respond to them. They are not your bus boys. They're sitting on the cloud nine and you can just snap your fingers and get Archangel Michael to come and help you or get Archangel Ma Raphael to heal you. So, if you are asking angels for anything, understand that terms and conditions, the systems of light and terms and conditions of system of darkness, they are all very, very different. 
if you have a family and you know somehow there is like um, a generational curse, someone cursed somebody in the in the generation many many generations ago, a long time ago. Since then, there's always some kind of misfortune in the bloodline. Whether it's addiction, whether it's, you know, some things that just keep on repeating themselves. And you've heard, okay, this family must be cursed. Somebody somewhere happened. What it means is some relative of yours, some bloodline, many generations ago could be, you know, not so many generations ago, but that happened. It took place in space and time. So when you are calling upon, let's say, five centuries ago, someone in your bloodline had a child dying because of fever, right? And in desperation, in desperation, you called upon somebody, please, or you, you knew that the only person could save that child was the person who wasn't let's say Christian, a person who other people were afraid of. They were just weirdness about them. They were either, they were like a wizard or um, a witch, but they were also known for their just wicked actions. It was just an example from the top of my head. And then you take your child and you run to that, to that wizard or witch and ask, please save my child, save my child. And the ritual is done. And maybe the person who did the ritual connected was connected to the dark force. You can get healed by the light and the dark equally. It's not that angels that heal. The dark forces can also heal. And this is a topic for another conversation. If you really want to understand these things, I teach them in mediumship courses or angelic mediumship. So you understand how healing happens. So borrowing energy from the light, system of light, or the darkness. So when the child is healed, there is a contract between the dark force and that individual. Somehow the contract was not fulfilled. And the terms and conditions of that old healing contract are now being passed on from generation to generation until someone pays the debt. Someone has to pay that energetic debt. Someone have to stop that generational curse by doing something, by creating the conditions, just fulfilling terms and conditions. And that's again a topic for another video. If you want to know how, please let me know in the comments below. But here you are experiencing the after effects of some bloodline healing that happened centuries ago and you're still in the bloodline paying the consequences so in this case angels cannot help you angels cannot interfere and say you know what you seems like you seems like you are a good guy and <laughs> let me just remove that for you just you know just brush it off your shoulders and all the curses being removed it doesn't work like that so you sometimes you come into the world to be in a certain bloodline to experience certain negative consequences so you overcome them so you get in this lifetime you get the resources you get the energy you get the wisdom to change that very thing so in this case, angels cannot help. If you have made contracts with this, the, let me just say, it's not you specifically. I mean, someone in your bloodline have made contracts with dark power. So there will be consequences. And in this case, angels cannot interfere because rules are the rules. You make contracts with light or contracts with dark. Dark forces cannot interfere when you make contracts with the light. They can't do it. They can't break these laws. In the same way, light forces cannot interfere when it happens the other way around. I hope I'm making sense. There's a lot to talk about. But here's what you need to understand. Number one, you need to know that angels obey laws. They are the beings of light. They serve the system of light. Anything to do with light, good. System of well-being, system of expansion. 
system of collective good. Here, angels are going to help you. <clears throat> angels are going to do whatever they can to assist you. But you also understand it's for the common good. That's the nature of their game. Common good for all. They help systems. Okay? So that's the first law. Everything that you ask angels when in, that involves the well-being of other people, they will respond. Number two, angels cannot interfere with anything that is done by your free choice or the blood, the bloodline, the choice of your bloodline. This is, again, the systems of this world that you cannot break. You need to have other systems in place to overcome these systems or to uh, break the chains and cycles of these systems by creating new ones. So that's number two or number three. I guess I just put all these laws together, but I hope you guys are understanding in general sense how you can truly um, communicate with angels, how you can be empowered by their assistance, their help, and how angels can help you to evolve as human being because that's their job, because that's what they truly want. That's where they truly want to bring the best in you. All right, so here you go. Let me know in the comments if you have questions. If anything I said triggered a thought process, let me know. Let's talk. Bring your questions to the comments section below.